In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this simple dashboard to display your athlete's results. So what you can see is on the top, we have the counter movement jump variables as well as their average values. And then on the bottom, we're displaying whether that athlete is performing better or worse than their normal. All of this is completely dynamic. As I change the date, the graphs will automatically update to display the new data. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back and we are going to create that dashboard that I showed you in the intro video. Now, in order to get this project started, what I have here on the left is just an easy data set. We have um, athlete names. So in this case, we have four different athletes and then the dates that they perform the test. And then we have the counter movement jump scores from that date. And as you can see, I'll just scroll down. We're going basically all the way from January 1st to January 10th. OK, so the first step in this project is that we want to pull out the data that we actually want to graph. So what I want to be able to do is based on the date of testing, I want to be able to pull out that data and then create a graph off of that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just create a little drop down menu here. And like I do in a lot of my videos, I'm just going to color this cell yellow so that we know where the drop down menu is going to go. And in this cell, I'm going to create a data um, data validation and it's going to ask me if I want to create a list from range. I'll click the little um, spreadsheet icon here and then I'm going to click cell B and I want it to start at B2. So we're going to go from B2 all the way down B. So as you can see, it's going to start at B2 and then work its way all the way down B. When I hit OK and save, I'm going to now have a drop down menu where I can select any of those dates. Now, one thing to note about Google Sheets is whenever I create a drop down menu from a data set like this where I have matching values, the drop down menu is only going to display the unique values. So that's one of the the benefits of Google Sheets. So for example, if I was to create the drop down menu for the names, it would only show the four unique names. I wouldn't have a million copies of those names. So that's just um, plus one for Google Sheets. So now that we are able to pick our date, um, I'm going to pick a date out of the data set here or out of the drop down menu. And now I'm going to create a function to pull out that data. And this is going to just be a simple filter function that we've used before. So I'll click under where I've typed out athlete and I'll go into my formula bar and I'm going to type in filter and I actually want to filter the entire range. So I'm going to type A2 all the way to C. So we're starting at A2, working our way all the way over to the C column and then all the way down and then comma. The only condition that I have is I only want to pull it out when the B column, um, B2 to B is equal to the date that I have selected. And I'm gonna close that off and hit enter. And as you can see now, it'll just pull out the four records for that date. And if I was to change this date, you can see that those all switch. Okay, so that's gonna be really important because now we can start to make our graph off of this. So what I can do here is I can highlight the athlete name and the counter movement jump and all I do to do that is I highlight it and then hold down control and I can highlight the other one and then go to insert and insert a chart and you can see now um, as I delete some of these other pieces from the chart we have an easy little chart here now that we can use to display that value and because it's linked to these cells it's going to be completely dynamic as I change okay so if you remember from the video, the next thing that we want to do is actually add um, a dot on the chart to show the average. So what I'm going to do is create another column here and I'm going to type in average CMG, CMJ, sorry. And I'm going to use a function in here um, called average ifs. Okay, and what this is going to look like is it's going to be equal average ifs. And when I open that up, I can keep this open. It's going to ask me for a few things. The first thing that's going to ask me for is the average range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this whole column here, C to C. And I know that I'm not going to change this. So I'm just going to lock that in with F4 so that I put a dollar sign in front of each one. Now, the next thing it's going to ask me for is the criteria range. And what I want is I want the average 
up to and including the date that I select. So I'm gonna select the date column as my average range, lock that in with F4, and then the criteria when I hit comma, the criteria that I want is when this date column is less than or equal to the date that I've chosen. When we're working with any of the ifs, some ifs are uh, max ifs, average ifs, we have to put our criteria in quotation. So I'm gonna put quotation less than or equal to, and then quotation, and then we also have to use the and symbol, and I'm going to select where I um, uh, stored my date, F4 one more time to lock that in, and I'm gonna use one more criterion. The next thing that I want is when the name is actually matched to the name of the athlete in this column or in this row. So what I'm gonna do is select the name column and then comma and the criterion that I want is just when it is equal to this column right here or this row. So I want it when it's equal to Dave and I know that that's always going to be in the E column. So I'm only gonna put a dollar sign to lock in the E column and when I close off this bracket what you're gonna see is it gives me my average value and I should be able to drag this down and it'll give me my average value for um, Taylor and then my average value for Vicky, okay? Um, and then Steve as well, okay? So that is um, our average ifs function and if I change this around, you should see that the values change and that is working just fine. Now what I wanna do is actually put that value on this chart. So I'm gonna double click on the chart to open up the chart window. And down here under series, I'm gonna click add a series. And I'll click the spreadsheet icon and I'm just going to select my average column and hit okay. And you can see now it's given me this line. So if I go over to customize and go to the series um, option, I can choose the average CMJ and here I can give it um, a pointer. Let's make it, I don't know, four pixels, seven pixels, let's say. We give it that circle, and then if I wanna take away this actual line, on the line thickness, if I make this zero, the line will actually go away. So this is a good way to display the average um, for that test, for that athlete up to and including that date. It's just a little marker that sits on top of the graph and allows you to see sort of where that athlete fits um, with regards to the score that they just had. So for example, you can see Dave on this date, um, he's basically right at his average versus Taylor's below his and Vicky's above hers, and then um, Steve is above, above his as well. Okay, so that's part one. And now part two, we wanna create that Z-score graph. So the next column that I'm gonna add here is actually a Z-score. And what I can do here is I can use a function called standardize. And we're gonna break this function down a little bit. So I'm gonna type equal standardize, open that up, and it's gonna ask me for the value that I wanna standardize. And we already have that value. It's stored right in G3 because we've pulled it out with our filter function. So I'm going to just lock in the first part of that because that is never gonna change. Then it's gonna ask me for the for the mean, which in other words is the average, and we already have that because we've pulled that out already, so I can select that cell right there, and that's not gonna change, so I can lock that in. And then the last piece that it's gonna ask me for is the standard deviation. So what we can do here is we can perform um, a calculation for that inside of this function. So I'm gonna type in STDEV, open that up, and it's gonna ask me for all of my values. Okay, so what I wanna do is actually pull out all of those values and I could use a filter function to do that. So what I'm gonna do is type in filter, open that up, and what I wanna filter is I wanna filter the C column and I wanna do that when the name column is equal to the name that we have chosen and I wanna do that when the date column is less than or equal to the date that we have chosen. And I'm gonna close that off and I'll walk you through this one more time. I'm gonna just lock in all of these 
um, values. So this becomes draggable in a second. So basically what this looks like is in, in, instead of pulling out all the numbers individually, what I'm performing is a filter. So if you remember the filter that we did here to pull out all of these cells, we're doing something very similar. So what we're doing is we're taking all of the counter movement jump measures when the name is equal to Dave, that is AA uh, matches E3, and also when um, BB, so the date column, is equal to the date that we've chosen. And when I hit enter here, what you're gonna notice is that it's gonna give me my Z score. And because of the way that I've locked all of these in, I should be able to drag this down and get the Z score for each of these. Now the last piece that I wanna do is just separate these out by positive and negative values. So what I usually do is type in something like this, P-O-S-V-E, and then N-E-G-V-E, and I'm just gonna perform a small check here to check whether these are positive or negative, because when I go to create my graph in a second, I'm gonna use these as two different series. So how this is gonna look for the positive, I'm just gonna type equals if this cell here is greater than zero, which would mean it's positive, then I want you to reference that cell. Otherwise, just return nothing in the form of two quotation marks. And I'm gonna close that off. And as I drag this down, what you'll see is it just pulls out the positive values. And then for the negative, it's the same thing, but opposite. So I'm gonna type in equals if the z-score is less than zero, whoops, then reference the z-score, otherwise return nothing in the form of two quotation marks. I hit enter, and I'm just going to drag this formula down. So from here, I'm gonna create a graph out of this. So I'll select my athlete column, hold down control, select my positive column and my negative column, and I'm going to go to insert, chart, and you can see it already starts to look the way that we want. So I'm just gonna put it on the bottom here so that they match up a little bit. And I'm gonna take this title out so that we maximize, whoops. I'm gonna take the title out so that we maximize the, um, the amount of space on this graph. So I just double click there and then I can hit, whoops, I gotta get that. Double click on that and hit delete. Hold on a sec, there we go, delete. And then I'll take out the athlete down here at the bottom. And one other thing that we have to do here is under setup, I'm gonna change my stacking to standard. And what that does is because we're doing two different series here, what um, Google Sheets would normally do is put one and then the other. But if I choose it to standard because I know that there's only ever gonna be one value um, per name, um, it would just it would stack them on top of each other, but because there's only one, it's gonna show it as one whole bar graph, and it just makes it match up to the, the graph above it. Now from here, we just have to do a couple things to make it look a little nicer. So I'm gonna go over to Customize, and we will go to our series. We'll take our positive values, and I'm gonna make it like a lighter green color, and then um, we'll take our negative value, and we're gonna make it like a lighter red color, so that just kind of makes it look a little bit nicer. And then what we'll do is go down to our vertical axis and I'm gonna make the minimum value minus two and the maximum value two. And maybe I'll make the text color black and maybe the grid lines we'll just put in, you know, we'll put in the, the major grid lines and make it black for the vertical and it just sort of helps it look a little bit nicer. But as you can see now, we've just kind of created that um, Z-score graph above or below and our average graph along with our score. And all this represents is the athlete and then how far above or below they are for their, from their average. And then you can see it based as a Z-score um, represented as well. And these two graphs work really nicely together because you can just sort of set one on top of the other or set them side by side or, or one below the other and they tell the whole picture. So as I change the date, you can see that all of these graphs change to represent um, the new scores. So I hope this trick helps you out and if it does and you end up creating this sheet, please tag me in it on either Instagram or Twitter at, at DSM Strength, and I will be sure to give you kind of a shout out and I love to see um, when people are actually creating the sheets that I'm showing them how to make. So 
If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so that you can keep up to date when we have new videos. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.